I am giving us a charge on the strength of Deborah. Um, in Judges chapter 4 and in verse 4 where we read, he said, and, the, and Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, she judged Israel at that time and she dwelled under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in Mount Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. The first thing we want to look at in the life of Deborah, the strength and which we are going to dwell on now, is called spirituality. Her spirituality, I believe, was one of her greatest strengths. The Bible said she was a prophetess. You can't be a prophetess without solid spirituality. And like the woman of God told us, she dwelt in between two spiritual, highly spiritual locations, Rema and Bethel, showing you her passion for the presence of God. So spirituality is one of the things we want to trust God in this conference to acquire a higher level of spirituality. Now, what will spirituality do in the life of a person? What did spirituality do in the life of Deborah? Number one, your spirituality, your spirituality determines your authority. At the root of authority is spirituality. Anywhere you see authority, what fuels it is spirituality. And the strength of your spirituality is what determines the strength of your authority. Show me an authoritative person in the realm of the spirit and I will show you a spiritual person. Elijah was highly authoritative according to 1 Kings 17. One, he said, before God whom I stand, no rain, no dew. And that was rooted in spirituality. So it is our depth with God that determines our height in life. Our depth with God. Your depth with God determines your mark on it. So if there is anybody seated here who is not happy, with your, with your authority level in the realm of the spirit. If you hate the way demons respond to you. You hate the way witches molest you. If you hate the way ancestral spirits are trying to render your life useless. Or you hate the way your life is going in authority. What you need to do is to, is to shift level in spirituality. A bankruptcy of spirituality is a bankruptcy of authority. We and men lack spirituality, they lack authority. And so the Deborah generation are a generation of people with spiritual intensity. People with spiritual fervency. People with spiritual buoyancy. And, and as a result of their intensity, they have authority. Number two, your spirituality determines your audacity. Audacity refers to boldness. Audacity refers to confidence. Your spirituality determines your audacity. It determines your ruggedity. It determines your ferocity. Your spirituality determines what you can dare. The things you can dare. It determines the things you can confront. Your spirituality. Deborah was able to go into battle and literally lead the battle for men because of a spiritual root that gave her an unusual audacity. You need to come to a point in your life where you are not a victim of terrible emotion. A victim of crying today and crying tomorrow. You need to shift your spirituality to another level in order to increase your audacity, your ferocity. And I can say to you that audacity is the cure for calamity. The devil rides on timidity. The devil, the devil confronts the timid. You see, audacity is cure for calamity. From the days of John the Baptist till now, the Bible said, the kingdom suffered violence and the violence take it by force. So you increase your spirituality and you increase your audacity and decrease the calamity. 
So spirituality determines authority. Secondly, spirituality determines audacity. And thirdly, spirituality determines supernaturality. I'm sure you get that. Spirituality determines supernaturality. It's right there on the screen. It determines your spiritual level, determines your supernatural operativeness. It determines the level to which you see the supernatural. The level to which you see the extraordinary. Put it in plain form. Your spiritual level determines the miracles at your disposal. Determines the signs and wonders at your disposal. Determines the results you see that are not ordinary. Am I speaking to somebody here today? A person that is bankrupt spiritually is bankrupt of the supernatural. Where the life of a person is not sufficiently spiritual, that life will be devoid of great dimensions of the supernatural and the extraordinary. That was why Deborah was able to move the way she moved and gave instruction. The Bible says the river of Kishon fought against Caesarea. The Bible said the stars in their courses fought Caesarea. Those were supernatural events happening. Elements of creation and nature were fighting the battle with the people of God. Why? Because there was a spiritual woman that led the battle. I prophesy to somebody here today the things around you that have been natural all this while in a short time to come starting from this conference your supernatural level shall increase. Amen. You believe that? Say it louder. Amen. amen. You believe that? Say the loudest. Amen. amen. So your spirituality determines your supernaturality it determines your supernaturality my wife traveled some time back to the new york city and uh, in the in, during winter and and you know new york city has had a lot of um, blackouts and a lot of terrible storms and and and, and the forecasters forecasted that there was going to be a terrible storm, a wind storm, a, a winter storm, or whatever it is that was going to hit New York City. People should not go out. So people were traveling and going to Connecticut and going to New Jersey and other places nearby and traveling away from New York City. And she was there for an assignment. And she called me from there. And she said, this is what the forecasters have forecasted. And they are forecasters, they deal with them as if it is God who spoke. Because they have, they have a record that if they said there will be a windstorm tomorrow, forget about it, it's going to happen. And they forecast, and she called me from New York City that she has told the people the same way we pray and rain will not follow, things will happen the same way we want to pray and cancel the storm. So we agreed together. One of our members here traveling also had flights canceled on in that same journey an agreement prayer was made on that journey that that wind storm is diverted brothers and sisters for the first time their forecast could not happen it was shifted to another direction we are almost a hundred million people according to what we heard were affected because there is a supernaturality that goes hand in hand with spirituality. Am I speaking to somebody here? Our lives have been too natural because our spirituality has been too low. Our lives have been affected with what affects every other person because our spirituality has been too low. I believe that a, a Deborah generation is a fire generation. A generation of women. If you are married to fire, you have to be fire. If she's the wife of Lapidot, then she must be fire herself because the two have become one. I prophesy to somebody here, your supernatural results are all going to increase before the end of this year. And I am talking about starting from this second. You believe that, say a louder amen. Lift your right and say, I refuse to be natural. I refuse to be ordinary. I refuse to be casual and usual. I am supernatural because I am spiritual. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Is God speaking to anybody at all? Your spirituality determines your authority. Your spirituality determines your audacity. Your spirituality determines your supernaturality. And your spirituality, number four, determines your vitality. It determines your energy level. Your spirituality determines your energy level. It determines your vitality. It determines your stamina. It determines your agility. 
Do you understand what I'm talking about? I'm talking about physical strength and resilience. Elijah had such a super, a spiritual relationship with God that made him to beat horses in the race. Deborah went to war among men and was literally a commander of battle by reason of super of spirituality. When a person is weak spiritually, they are weak physically. Am I speaking to someone here today? I am telling you from experience, when you are strong spiritually, you are strong physically. There is an energy in your bones that cannot be explained. There is an energy in your system that cannot be explained. You have stood on your feet for seven hours non-stop and you feel like standing for another seven hours because spirituality is the authentic supplier of energy. That was why the Bible said in Psalm 84 and in verse 7, they go from strength to strength not from weakness to weakness every one of them in zion appeared before the lord is god speaking to somebody here if there is anybody here that is a victim of weakness weakness in the body and weakness two o'clock kind of time in the afternoon you are tired you wake up in the night breathe gasping for air that plague is over right now because because the deborah generation is not a weak generation it's not a feeble generation it's not a sickly generation it's not a generation breaking down today breaking down tomorrow i perceive today that god is supplying somebody the kind of energy you have never seen before that will make men to wonder what is the secret of this woman's energy what is the secret of this man's energy you believe that shout the loudest amen the reason why we need energy is because you need energy to fulfill destiny Many of us have not been able to do much with our lives because of excessive weakness, excessive weariness, excessive tiredness. Many things are suffering in your life because of an indolent spirit that must die. Your spirituality is a sponsor of your vitality, your energy, your resilience. Number five. Your spirituality determines your sensitivity. Your spirituality determines your perceptivity. It, it determines your perceptivity or your perception. Capacity to have a sharp spiritual antenna. Is, is fueled by spirituality in Jeremiah chapter 33 and in verse 3 he said call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which thou knewest not get closer to me and you will become sharper in your spirit are, are you hearing me here in Habakkuk chapter 2 and in verse 1 to 2 I will stand upon my watch I will watch to see what he will say to me and what I shall answer when I am reproved when I stand with him in the watch tower there is a sensitivity that happens there is a sharpening of a spiritual antenna my dear brothers and sisters and daughters for some of you i want to i want to say to you you need to know the state of your children per time the state of your husband per time the state of the ministry what is going on why something is not working why something is working and you need that sensitivity by the frequency of spirituality everyone with a dumbman prophetic gift before this conference is over it will break out and for your information every every child of god is prophetic to an extent he said as many as are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of God. He said, the spirit beareth witness with our spirits that we are the son of God. You see, and you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. You see, are you hearing what I'm saying here? The, 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 there is the, the, the prophetic is the natural realm of God. Is God speaking to somebody here? Even if you can't see visions and you cannot hear a voice, you can dream a dream. Is God speaking to somebody here? So the Deborah generation is like the Issachar generation. Men that have 
understanding of the time to show Israel what they ought to do and it is a revelation generation a revelational generation a perceptivity generation a sensitivity generation so something that is going to happen in this conference as a confirmation that we attended this conference is that our spiritual eyes are opening to a greater dimension spiritual ears are opening spiritual perception is opening there is a shift in revelation a shift in understanding a shift in insight you believe that say the loudest amen look at somebody by yourself say i refuse to be blind i refuse to be deaf i refuse to be dumb spiritually i am a member of it of the deborah generation of the isaka generation i am a member take your seat i called one of my children one day and i was talking to her after i spoke one two three lines to, how did you know I, said, I know i am meant to know i am your father so i know by the spirit is god speaking to somebody here today is god speaking to someone here today spirituality fuels sensitivity the closer we get to god the sharper our spiritual antenna when you think you are thinking at times you will understand that you have the mind of god being deposited on your mind number six your sp spirituality determines possibilities your spirituality determines your possibilities what is possible is determined by the extent to which we are spiritual so impossibility thrive where spirituality dries up elijah said no rain no dew why i am standing before him i'm standing with him and except by my word no rain shall fall what is possible in ministry is determined by the level to which we are spiritual what is possible in business what is possible in marriage what is possible in the work of our hands is determined by the level of our spirituality check through the scripture anybody you saw that was truly spiritual walked in the realm of all possibilities is god speaking to somebody here the realms of all possibility and beloved brothers and sisters if you don't want your life to be buried in impossibility rise in spirituality and somebody may say i am already spiritual i will disappoint you by saying that spirituality is in levels you are at a level now and that is why you have seen the things you have seen now if you can shift in levels then there is a shift in your possibilities a shift in your power a shift in the potency of your utterance a shift in your manifestation anyone here say a loud amen Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Anybody receiving something here? Number seven. Your spirituality determines your opportunities. Opportunities in God. Opportunities in life. It determines where you can stand. Your stand with God determines where you can stand in life. A woman by name Deborah that was truly spiritual became a commander of the army of a nation. As a matter of fact, she became the leader of the nation, the judge of the land. Why? Because your stand with God determines where you stand in life. Is God speaking to somebody here? You don't need to beg to see a governor or beg to see a senator or beg to see anybody for if a man's ways pleases the lord even enemies not to talk of friends not to talk of other people he make it even his enemies to be at peace with him am i speaking to somebody here today hear me sirs relationship with god gives you the highest level of honor the highest level of dignity the highest level of decorum the highest level of opening openings that no man can give 
spirituality is the doorway to opportunities in fact it is doorway also to prosperity concerning king Uzziah in second chronicles chapter 26 and in verse 5 the bible says as long as he sought the lord god made him to prosper as long as he sought the lord god made him to prosper god made him to excel god opened doors for him opened opportunities for him everything worked for him as long as he sought the lord Beloved, it pays to be spiritual. Again, I am not talking from a lecturer's point of view. I am talking from a practitioner's point of view. What have we said so far? We said that your spirituality determines your authority. Your spirituality determines your authority city your spirituality determines your supernaturality your spirituality determines your vitality your spirituality determines your sensitivity your spirituality determines your possibilities your spirituality determines your opportunities in fact i will add two more your spirituality determines your vocality a man hearing God can never be silenced by man. It determines your vocality. It determines your voice in your generation. It determines the, your capacity to command and be obeyed. It determines your vocality. Deborah was a woman that was vocal because she was spiritual. Number next, your spirituality determines your security. Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. It determines your security, determines your immunity, determines your, 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 your defense. It determines your security. When they went from one nation to another, Psalm 105 verse 12 to 15, and from one people to another, he suffered no man to do them wrong. He rebuked kings for their sake, saying, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. Touch not mine anointed. That was Deborah. And that was what he experienced. She was of the Deborah generation. If there is nothing that has happened in this conference, and the only thing that happened was that your spiritual level shifted, then it is all right. I heard from Bishop Wally, okay, he said, teach a man to pray in the Holy Ghost. Or teach a man to fellowship with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will teach him the rest. <laughs> Papa Yedeko says, man's real needs are spiritual. The real needs, say I have need for money. It's not money. If the spiritual is fixed, the spiritual will show you how to fix the money. If the spiritual is fixed, the spiritual will show you how to fix the money rally. Am I communicating? It says man's realness are spiritual. So, here is where we are at this junction. We need to shift in our spirituality. And now, I want to address the enemies of spirituality. What are the things that can make a person unspiritual? Mashoko pakata kalabada Number one is premature contentment. Early arrival syndrome. You prayed for five hours today so you relax tomorrow. You prayed for three hours today so you relax for the, for the rest of the week. It's not so. The, the manna is gathered daily. Give us this day our daily bread. There is a fire on the altar that must burn daily. He said the fire was done not Leviticus chapter 6 verse 12. The fire of the altar must not be allowed. The fire of the altar shall be burning in it. It shall not be put out. The priest shall burn wood on it every morning. Spirituality is morning by morning, day by day. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot survive on yesterday's manna. You cannot survive on yesterday's fire. Every day needs fresh fire. Every day needs fresh manna. Every day needs fresh oil. There are people that come to a point in ministry or in life. 
where they think, oh, I'm doing well. I'm doing far better than other people. No, sir. No. It's a great calamity. Early arrival. Premature contentment. Amos chapter 6 verse 1 said, Woe unto them that are at ease in Zion. At ease in Zion. At ease in Zion. Ease. Relaxation is the doorway to degeneration. Spiritual relaxation will produce spiritual degeneration. Your life is not on fire and you are and you are you are you are, you are relaxed. Your your your, your 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 prayer life is down and you are relaxed. It's the doorway to degeneration. Number two is over activity. Call it an over congested schedule. A mind drawn in too many directions. I want us to know that activity does not equal productivity. I want you to know that your intimacy is superior to your activity. Intimacy with your maker is superior to your activity for your maker. Over activity. Secular activity, even church activity. Anything that makes you too busy for God, it is the busyness of death. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? It is the busyness of death. It, you are too busy for God means you are too busy for life. We live in a world where the devil has doubled his effort. Afflictions multiplied like water. Go to the hospitals, you see all manner of afflictions. This is not the time to be overactive, aimless activity. This is the time to be strategically spiritual. Is God speaking to someone here today? Overactivity, overactivity. Now, let me say this to you. As busy as I am, many days I will cover up to 10 chapters of the Bible before I reach the office. With every other thing happening at the same time. You know why? Because there are times that that, that Bible is playing in the, in the bathroom. It's playing the audio Bible is playing while I'm on the, reading, on the dining table. And if I miss one thing he said, I can pause it. And then revise it again. But before, before I come from the house to the office, I must have gone like three or four or five chapters, depending on the length of the chapters. And you, you, like John G. Lake says, you run as you walk, you walk as you run. Everything is part of your spiritual life and your spiritual life is part of everything. There is no... Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? Everything, the baby nappy is being changed. Worship is playing in the background. Are you hearing me? You are blasting in tongues in the background. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? A message is firing into your ears in the background. Is God speaking to somebody here? You, are, you, you made up your mind that, your, 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 that nothing will cause your spiritual life to suffer. So everything is part of everything. Beloved, never allow overactivity to ruin your spirituality. Take your seat. Hallelujah. And there are many people just keep on going. After a while, you become so empty. So empty. To pray, to pray become a problem. You become easily irritable. Small, small things get you angry. That is to show you you are running on empty tank. You are running on what? Empty tank. Danger, danger, danger. It's showing you red light. Your patience level reduces. Little thing makes you depressed. Easily bitter. Easily, ag easily aggressive. Am I communicating? The sweetness of your spirit is lost. You struggle to bring up a worship. You struggle to bring up prayer. Even in tongues. You are, that, that is, that is, that is, there is, there is, there is a reduction in the fuel level. And the worst thing that can happen to anybody is to run on low spiritual tank. That is when temptations overcome people. That is when people do regrettable things. That is when people do things that they wish they never did. Is God speaking to someone here today? So you must come to that point where you refuse to allow an overcome suggested schedule to destroy your destiny. Women, you must understand that God has specially given you the capacity to multitask. That ability is there that must be maximized. The woman has the food on the fire. Has the baby crying on the couch. Has a visitor knocking on the door. And has the phone ringing at the same time. 
and she can attend to all of them on the spot. She goes to the fire, probably turns something down, carries the baby, pat the baby on the back, carries the phone, hello, who is there, while walking to the door, and then call you back later, knock on the door, and then find out who is on the door. A man will be totally uselessized. With the multiple, in fact, the baby cry will enough is alone to send him out. Are you following what I'm saying here? That multitask can be applied in your spiritual life. In your spiritual, that was what made Catherine, what do you call her, Kenneth Copeland's wife, Gloria Copeland, to become a, an indomitable spiritual giant. She read the Bible through many times while nursing her children. While the husband was on in crusades and she was at home, she was not just rendered useless by delivering children or whatever. She, was, she, was, she saw them as, as a blessing and unloaded herself. That woman, if she opens her mouth and you hear revelations. Papa read the husband's book. He couldn't understand. He read her book. Bam. Revelation came. Am I communicating at all? Beloved, please take your seat in the presence of the Lord. An over-congested schedule is what has been, has been the, the undoing of many of us. Even pastors in ministry, busy with the work of the Lord and far from the Lord of the work. Far from the Lord of the work. You don't know the last time you heard from the one you claim to be talking for. Number three, enemy of spirituality is the lack of a definite spiritual schedule. The lack of a definite spiritual schedule. You must be able to wake up every day knowing what am I doing for this day. Number one, prayer. Two, scriptures. Three, worship. Four, and lined up. And then, now for me, I have a rigid 10 item schedule. Very rigid. Any other thing can come and enter it in the day. This is rigid. The first voice I want to hear is the voice of God when I wake up. So, my Bible and my scripture, audio scripture, must enter my ears. Am I speaking to somebody here? And then you wake up in the morning and you follow the shadow. Now, this, what happened, this was what happened to me one day. I noticed that there was something I was meant to do that day I didn't do. Ah, this is meant to be my schedule today. Why didn't I do this? And it's not, it's not hard. And I looked at where I wrote down my day's schedule and noticed that I forgot to include it in the schedule. So I did every other thing I didn't do that one. So my problem that day was not like lack of time, but lack of schedule. Lack of plan. There are many of us who say, I didn't have time to do many things. It's a lie. It was not time you lacked. It was plan you lacked. It was schedule you lacked. When was the last time you lacked the time to bath? When was the last time you lacked the time to eat? When was the last time you, you even you lacked the time for many of us to shave your hair or something. That was the last time. No. It, I mean, whatever is important to you has its time. So, many people, please take your seat. Having battling with a lack of spirituality is actually a lack of a definite spiritual schedule. Bible said, the Bible said in Genesis chapter 19 and in verse 27, he got up early in the morning to the place. There was a place, there was a time, there was a shadow. And he met with that shadow daily. Before you leave this conference, identify your daily shadow. When am I meant to wake? And if I, if I fail to wake at the time I was meant to wake, whenever I wake up, what am I meant to do? Identify your shadow and follow that shadow. It has been said in, 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 in human development quarters that, that anything that you do every day for 21 to 30 days becomes a habit. That it, it is hard to break. 
So if you can do the right thing continuously, consistently, a time will come in your life where it becomes automatic. It becomes like an intrinsic rhythmic thing. Like the heartbeat that beats without your control. Many have a lack of schedule. So there is no spirituality. Enemy number four is excessive indolence. This is oversleep. There are people who are married to, to complacence. Married to ease. A life overrun by laziness. It was Gloria Copeland that I, quoted, that I just talked about now who said, there is no victory for the lazy. Spirituality will never combine with laziness. You will never show me a spiritual giant that is a lazy man. Every giant in the gospel, in the realm of the spirit, is a man of rigorous spiritual discipline. Rigorous. Very rigorous. To be alive spiritually you must be awake physically to be alive spiritually you must be aggressive in the spirit you must let your spiritual exercises be rugged and, and, and rigid discipline yourself Paul the apostle was in our first Corinthians 9 and in verse 27 he brings his flesh under he exercises his flesh to obey the spirit am I communicating but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection lest that by any means when I have preached to others I myself should be a castaway am I? there are some of us that set the alarm clock and then the alarm clock will set us After it finishes ringing, you quench it and say, well, I have heard. Can you let me rest now? Log on, world wide web, don't sleep, don't come till morning. Achieving nothing. For some of you, if you are blessed with a husband that is aggressive in the spirit, that is audacious, that is, that is, that is ferocious, if you are blessed with such a husband, follow his shadow. As much as possible. Let one day my wife came to my prayer prayer room, and I said, "What is it?" He said, "I just came to sit here. Can I pray here with you?" I said, "Go ahead." And then, after she prayed for one hour or thereabout, and she was through, and she and she and she left. Later on, I asked her. I said, "What happened?" He said, "Oh wow, it was powerful to pray with you in that place." He said, I, "He said it's like being towed by a towing van." He said, that was how I felt. I, he said, it was effortless praying with you there because I was as like, like being told by a tower. If you are gifted with anybody, a husband that is aggressive in terms of spiritual exercise, cue in, cue in. What did I say? There are times, because every time I want to fast and I tell my wife, it is fasting automatic. If I say, don't give me food for the next three days, he said, okay, I have heard. Then she too will not eat for the next three days. Do you know what I will do? So next time, I will not tell her at all. So that I don't put her under pressure. At least um, uh, the primary call was me. Okay? So I don't, I don't. So, so, but I won't tell her. And she said, what of lunch? I said, don't worry. What of dinner? No problem. Then she will perceive in the evening that I'm on a journey. And she will go on the journey. Now, this thing has dragged her spirit. If you saw any fire, it's, it's, it's a product of also personal responsibility. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Chain prayer for 17 days, non-stop, 17 days. With 24-hour fast time, 17 days. I'll follow you on the journey. You must take advantage of associations that are positive. Especially that of a husband. And if you are a husband... And your wife is on fire. Cue in. Let your wife assist you to maintain fire. Hallelujah. This is very, very important. And you must make the flesh do what you want. The 
If you have to, if there are disciplines you have to learn regarding if I wake up, what do I do to stay awake? Learn it. There are times you don't sit on the chair to pray. You are pacing the floor. The next 30 minutes, one hour. Why? What are you doing that? So that sleep can find its level. If, like, if sleep, like, let him catch you on your feet. Hallelujah. Does this thing mean anything to anybody? So, number one is what? Enemy. Premature contentment. Number two is what? Over congested schedule. Number three. The lack of a definite spiritual schedule. Number four. Excessive indolence. And number five is surrender to adversity. When a person has surrendered to his or her problems, the spirituality must die. That is, because you are not married, you allow the singleness situation to become the major focus of your life. Paralyzes spirituality. I want you to understand that adversity is a major attack on spirituality. The devil uses it. Where, why is God? Why did God leave me like this? What did I do against God? Despite all the prayer I've been praying, nothing has happened. That devil is a bastard. Adversity paralyzes spirituality. Never allow your spirituality to be overcome by your adversity but let your spirituality overrun your adversity swallow it up the woman that was bent double kept on going to the temple here was how she walked for 18 years Luke chapter 13 walked like that for 18 years until one day be one day she came to the temple not for healing not for miracle, for normal worship. And Jesus said, today is your day, ma. Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. And we say, when we first read this passage, that if your warfare does not stop your worship, then your worship will swallow up your warfare one day. So, never surrender. Don't let yourself become less spiritual because you have not yet gotten a child. Hear me? I said you have not yet. What does that mean? It's coming. No devil can stop you from coming. The devil that can stop you from giving birth to a child in your lifetime, they have not born that devil. And for many of you, you are going with your miracle children from this conference. The devil that can stop you from getting married, they have not born that devil. Is somebody here today? The devil that can prevent your healing from HIV is not an existing devil. Devil. Who is he that said it and he come to pass? When the Lord commanded it not. The Lord God is a son and shield. He will give grace and glory. Psalm 84 verse 11. Is a husband a good thing? No good thing will he withhold. Is a job a good thing? No good thing will he withhold. Is the healing of your children a good thing? No good thing will he withhold. Is the salvation of your husband a good thing? No good thing will he withhold. Don't let the devil withhold your joy. For that which God is definitely releasing for you. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Am I communicating? There is somebody here today that should irritate the devil with your spirituality. Irritate him with your fire. Shift your fire to another level. Shift your prayer to another level. Tell the devil, Psalm 84 verse 11 is my answer to you. My miracle is coming. Therefore, you cannot stop my shout. You can't stop my dance. You can't stop my prayer. You can't stop my worship. You can't stop my fasting. You cannot stop my evangelism. Shout it yeah! yeah! 
What is spirituality? What is the content of spirituality? Just quickly, and then we go. Number one, it is a buoyancy of fellowship with God. Buoyancy of fellowship with God. Buoyancy. A buoyant prayer life. A prayer life that is not a struggle. A prayer life that is a flow. You are the one struggling to stop. It's not struggling to start. A, a, a spiritual person is a person that has a flow. It's a spiritual flow. Prayer is a flow. Just pray like you eat. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18. I'm praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Praying always. Praying always. Praying always. Praying always. Not praying sometimes. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17. Pray without season. Pray without season. Pray that is buoyancy. A buoyancy of fellowship with God. A prayer life that is alive. You don't need to wind the engine. The engine is already wound. What is spirituality? Number two is tangibility of divine presence. That is, you are lost in his presence and he is lost in you. That is, you are in him, he is in you. Some, uh, John chapter 15 verse 1 to 5. You abide in me, I abide in you. You are together. Tangibility of divine presence. You are moving about in a, with a feelable presence. Am I communicating? How many of you have ever felt the presence of God in, 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 inside service? Come, sister. The one with the cap. Yes, sister, come. It's a sister's meeting. So, so all of you come. What, what does it seem like to you? I'll be overwhelmed with the presence of God. I'll begin to cry uncontrollably. You begin to cry uncontrollably. Wow. What of you? Uh, my revelation spirit grew up. I started speaking in tongues. What of you? Sometimes I don't know what to say. I just start crying. Okay. Any other person who, whose own does not include crying? <laughs> because what I want to say... It will be dangerous if cry is the, is the example. Because I want you to feel that presence all the time. And, and, and you cannot be walking on the road crying all the time. <laughs> Joy. Hey, it is that presence we want to know. You say you feel the heavy presence of God. <laughs> Goose pimples. That's right. Well, you know what to feel, isn't it? You, you know when it is not there, isn't it? And you know when it is there. All right, God bless you. Take your seat. Right, in your closet, cry very well. Inside the church, cry very well. But on the road, if you are moving in that presence with crying, <laughs> there are many people who would. <laughs> Hallelujah. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Now, what I want to say is, that thing which most people feel only inside service. Feeling it on your own. In your bedroom. In your closet. Feeling it in your office. On the road. It's called the presence of God. It's called, it's, it's, it, it, it is spirituality. My wife walked to my office once or twice. Or more. I can't remember now. And she comes and looks at me. And what she feels. She says, oh, please, I'll come back later. She walks out. All I'm doing, I'm just sitting down there. One of the wives of our leaders came to my office one day and she came and said, Come in. She came, Good morning, sir. <laughs> nobody, no prayer, nobody said anything. What, what hit her? True spirituality brings you to a point. Where you carry that feelable presence as a mobile presence. You move with it. You walk in it. Am I communicating? Every time it begins to reduce, you know your spirituality is going down. Every time you can't feel that, that feelable. Now, 
Faith says we don't move by feelings, but it is not possible to encounter God and not feel something. John the Baptist said the things, Jesus said to John, the things we have seen, the things we have, the th go and tell John the things you have seen and heard and handled. The, 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 the apostle said that which we have seen and heard and handled of the word of life we declare to you is the tangibility of divine presence. People look at you, they see it. They come near you, they feel it. You, they, you, you open your mouth to speak, they perceive it. There is that feelable presence around you. Am I communicating? My shaka. When, when, when I give birth to children, I'm talking as if I was the one that was, was pregnant. <laughs> there are some I will carry, I think literally all of them. I will carry them on my chest like this and pray for hours. Three hours at times. One hour. Fertilized. I remember one day, one of them was sick with very serious fever. A few days old. Very sick. Fever. High temperature. My wife came and said, I have done everything to this child. Including medication, is it? And the child was still. It's okay, give me back. Go and rest. She went and slept. Like the child was on my chest for about three hours. Until the temp Because I, I carry temperature too. <laughs> it is temperature versus temperature. The one in my body swallowed the one in the body of the child. After about three hours, mother, hand on, take your child. That child, that child did just E exam, SSE exam, and there was no B near the result. A times 14. A in 14 places. Including mathematics, 80 something, 90 something. Child, are you hearing what I'm saying here today? So you, you, you can come to the point where you saturate your environment, saturate your children, saturate your house, saturate your own life with that tangible presence. I was going to, with uh, Samuel to I think it was AIT for a live recording one day, and he sat in my car with me. By the time we we're coming back, I asked him, I said, What did you feel? You see, the presence in this, is this place is heavy. Because it was palpable. It was tangible. It was, it was heavy. Before we read the secretariat, I see somebody going out of this conference. When you arrive, the first thing people will notice is that the presence of God is heavy around your life. Heavy around your family. You believe that shout the loudest. Amen. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. What is spirituality? It's buoyancy. Relationship with God. Tangibility of divine presence. It is number three. Freshness of word intake and word insight. Word intake and word insight. That is the word of God is entering your spirit daily. Entering your spirit daily. But the one that is most exciting is for you to be able to see new things daily. Fresh word, intake and insight. Spirituality. When Paul the apostle prayed for the Ephesians. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 16, 17, 18, 19. He prayed for the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. Fresh, fresh insight. It is insight that determines impact. Insight determines impact. Insight. How much you see from the world determines how much you will see out of the world, out of life. Freshness. No matter how busy you are, don't let days be going without the word. Where you cannot study, at least read. And pause. What is spirituality? Number four. Spirituality is a healthy worship life. 
healthy worship life. Healthy. Worship that is, that is bubbling forth from the spirit. Worship in the spirit. Worship in understanding. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and making melody to the Lord in your heart. I enjoy worship in the spirit many times because it combines the power of worship and praying in tongues together in one. Many times. A little candle, you are worthy, 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 Lord. The time, when the time comes, when you don't struggle to bring it out, spirituality is in, is in shape. You can use that as your spiritometer. What is spiritual meter? Spiritual meter. How long does it take me for song to come out? <laughs> For worship to come out of my spirit. Do I have to walk it up? Or I wake up in the morning and it is flowing? Is God speaking to somebody here? You can use it as your spiritometer. Worship. Buoyancy of worship life. What is spirituality finally? Number one. Zeal for kingdom service. The zeal of your house has eaten me up. The reproaches of them that reproach thee has fallen on me. Zeal for kingdom service. First Corinthians chapter 9 verse 16. Woe is me if I preach not the gospel. Necessity is laid on me. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory. For necessity is laid up on me. Yeah, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Zeal in kingdom service. Zeal in evangelism. Zeal in church service work. Zeal in financial sacrifice. Whenever your zeal is dying, you know that your spirituality is in danger. Beloved, Brothers and sisters who are the plenty of people here, I welcome you to a journey of tangible spirituality. Let Cameroon feel it when you get back. Let Aquaibom State, River State, everywhere you have come from, let them feel it when you get back. Stand up on your feet to the shower. In that day, the burden shall be lifted from off your shoulder and the yoke from off your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed. Pastor Solomon, come. I want to use you as one of the fattest persons here. One of the fattest. You can see how fat he is. If there was a yoke on his neck, God forbid. The Bible said, and it shall be in that day that the burden of the Assyrian shall depart from your shoulders and his yoke from your neck. The yoke shall, destroy, shall be destroyed because of fatness. When you have a situation around your life that refused to bow. Continue to fatten your spirit with spirituality. A time will come that you become too fat for the yoke. What used to press you down cannot go around your neck anymore. And all of a sudden, before you know it, bram! And here you are, the yoke breaks because of the fatness. How many of you know what they call fattening room? That they used to do in some part of the country before marriage where they fatten the lady to present her to the husband. Fattening room. In case
case there is any yoke around your life, go into God's fattening room. Let him supply you with nutrition. Amino acids, rema of the world, light and revelation, fire of the spirit. Then all of a sudden, singleness will do bram. You are too fat for the yoke. Barrenness will do bram. Witchcraft attack from your family will do bram. Why? I can't go around her anymore. She's too big for my grip. Now she is free.